So I, my name is Irma Olguin. Is, is anybody not familiar with, uh, get in tight guys, just get in real tight. <laughs> is anyone uh, not familiar with 59 Days of Code? Everyone knows what 59 Days of Code is, except for Nick, yeah right. Nick, who's competed in the competition for four years in a row, possibly five. Dun, dun. So 59 Days of Code started actually in 2009. It was a discussion that I was having with, at the time, it was the Central Valley Business Incubator. And I was talking to uh, Kirk Nagamini, Amini, excuse me, and Travis Sheridan. Uh, Travis has moved on and he lives in St. Louis now, but he, at the time, was my partner in crime uh, in putting 59 Days of Code together, and so he deserved a shout out for sure. By the way, if there are typos here, I did not proofread this at all. Uh, we're all the developers. They actually asked me at one point, are you the only developer in Fresno not working for a large company? And uh, I thought that that was ridiculous. Um, and I said, are you kidding me? Like, there are a ton of us. But mostly, the reason you don't know who we are is because we're sitting at Starbucks. Uh, we're buying the cheapest drink that you could possibly get. We're squatting there for six hours at a time. And we're working for really large companies outside of the area. And that was sort of the, that was the pattern at the time. And so they said, what can we do about this? Uh, we started brainstorming. There was uh, all kinds of stuff. There was, uh, well, let's, uh, let's advertise. We'll put it on Craigslist. We're all the developers. We'll do a survey. We'll talk to the large companies. We will uh, not give you any work and hire it all outside the area. And if people in the area really want to work, they'll come to us. None of those things were going to work, in my opinion. So my proposal to them at the time was give them a reason to do what they want to do, but in front of your faces. And so we started 59 Days of Code. At the time, it was just an expo. It was a way for companies to sort of find the developer talent that they wanted, uh, and a way for the developer. So I'm a developer, and I knew that I have a, a thousand ideas every day. And I want to build all of them, but there's just no time for it. And so it became a thing that I, I said, if we're going to ask them to do this, if we're going to ask them to compete, we're going to give them real prizes. We're going to give them real money, real services, whatever it is, so that you're incentivized to spend your nights and weekends when you probably should be with your spouse or your kids or your dog uh, to work on that idea for two months, for two whole months. Uh, and so we did. We put that together. In the very first year, uh, we gave away $7,500 uh, to the winner, uh, to the zero code winner, which was a lot of money because typically, and I know if you're a developer in the room, you can go and look up a bunch of competitions and the prizes are, you know, one million dollars in credit to a thing you're never going to use. Uh, you can, or we will give you money, but you have to relocate you and sign a contract that says the next seven generations are going to live in our town. Uh, or here's a competition uh, that's great, except for P.S. We own 70% of your company when you're done. Uh, so all those kinds of competitions existed. It was my argument then that we couldn't do that to the developers in Fresno, not if we wanted to keep them. And the incubator agreed. Uh, and so we, we did this. This is what we wanted to do. We'll put on a competition. It'll be two months long, uh, just a little bit under two, two months. You have to build a marketable prototype of whatever your idea is. We'll throw an expo. We'll put a bunch of people in the room. There'll be judges. We'll give away prizes. It'll be awesome. And that's all. these are the two things we set out to accomplish. Uh, this is year one. Travis, uh, we made these giant signs. This woman right here who uh, is retired, uh, it's smaller than that sign. <laughs> so what did it actually, what actually happened? Uh, we, we started this. The very first year, it was little more than a science fair. Uh, there were 11 teams that made it all the way to the showcase floor. We said you have to have a booth, which was basically a table and a chair and a laptop. Uh, a couple of the really ambitious, uh, ambitious teams made signage, which was like poster board, 11 by 17. I'm not going to lie to you guys, it was a little bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also awesome because we had 11 teams that made it to the showcase floor and we had like, I think it was uh, 600 people in the room. Mm. And they all just wanted to see what you guys were building. Uh, and so that made the incubator never ever say again, are there any developers in Fresno? Where are all the developers? It was proof. Uh, but some really unexpected things happened that first year. Uh, people started sponsoring, they got excited about it. There was a community. People said for the first time that they felt they weren't the only developer in Fresno. Uh, people started companies out of the competition. They got to know people uh, that were competing or that just happened to be at the competition. They said, ah, I need that guy. I need the skill that you have. 
and companies just popped out of the competition. Not because of anything that we did, but just because there was a place to do it, uh, a reason to do it. Uh, and then, of course, we gave away these prizes, and that, uh, that was great. And the develop developers said, hey, it sounds like you're actually trying to take care of us. And they threw their weight behind this event. And the next year, it doubled in size. There were, I think, uh, the second year, I think there were 21 teams that made it to the showcase floor, up from, ten, uh, up from 11. But there were something like 40 applications to compete. And that was huge to me. Even to me, and I thought to myself, that's it. We've maxed it out. We threw our uh, launch party. There were like 80 people there the very first year. And I thought, this is it. This is the developer community. I have found them. Uh, this last year, we threw the same launch party in a different location. There were 300 people there at the launch party. And so clearly, I was wrong, too. But it became a bunch of stuff and an economic driver, uh, the largest uh, gathering of technical talent in the Valley. And to me, that's, that's, a really, uh, that's really important. That's where people go. Uh, to meet other developers. That's where they go to see the ideas that are popping up around us. But most of all, uh, it was a lot of fun. And people kept saying over and over, this is the best thing I've done in Fresno uh, since I came here, it was compete in 59 Days of Code. It introduced them to folks. They got jobs, uh, or they left jobs. They started companies. Uh, and it was, again, just a lot of fun. So it's been five years, and it's been a blast. Uh, and yes, it's very, very much been my baby uh, since the beginning. I spend a lot of time uh, on 59 Days of Code, uh, but it really is time to pass the torch. And it's a little bit bittersweet because I don't really feel like the work is finished. Uh, yes, we set out uh, a couple of goals. I feel like we accomplished those. But every time you do that, there's another goal. There's another bar. There's something else you want to accomplish. And I just don't feel like that's ever going to end. So it worries me a little bit to, to move on. Uh, last year, it was January of last year, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 59 Days of Code became its own independent nonprofit entity. Uh, and with that, we started a board of directors. That was really important because before that, it was really just making decisions on the fly, <laughs> to be honest with you. Hey, Irma, how do we do this? Hey, uh, Travis, how do we do this? And we just kind of decided on our own, which can be really terrifying. And luckily, it worked out for the best, but in many cases, it doesn't. So this year, or excuse me, as of last year, we have a board. This is our second year uh, with that. And so I feel comfortable enough sort of to leave it in other people's hands. Uh, and the board that we have, both last year and this, they volunteer a lot of their time. And it's really working out for, uh, for the best in terms of uh, developer interest. Uh, so it's time. But like I said, I have some concerns. And I want to share those with you. I want to tell you what I'm worried about in passing the torch. These are my top five concerns uh, for the future of 59 Days of Code. So this is me pouring out my heart. <clears throat> uh, number five, fundraising is really hard. It's not comfortable and never has been comfortable for me to ask people for money, except for you guys. You can leave $20 right here when you're done. <laughs> uh, but every single year, 59 Days of Code is 100% uh, donation based. 100% uh, donation base. We don't take any money from a grant, although that would be nice. Uh, nobody uh, has gifted us anything in terms of like an endowment. <clears throat> everything, 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 every year we raise it and we give more than 50% of it back to the competitors. Uh, plus there are hard costs and so on and so on. Uh, fundraising is really hard and it scares me to think that we have to continue to ask people for money every year. Do I think we can do it? I do because I believe in what we're doing. Uh, but it's difficult, and that scares me. Number four, volunteers. I cannot tell you or count the number of volunteers that 59 Days of Code uh, has used uh, over the last four years and now five. Uh, it's up until this year, we've probably had, it's less than 1,000, but upward of 300 volunteers uh, just giving up tons of time. And if we put a dollar value on it, we're easily in the millions. Uh, and up until this year, we've never been able to pay anyone for anything. No one has received a red cent, including myself, from 59 Days of Code. This is the very first year, uh, due to fundraising efforts last year, that we were able to pay people for stuff. That's a really big deal to me. Um, back when we were basically a, a, a technical science fair, uh, to now when we're you know, raising money and paying people to do stuff, that's a long way yeah. for me. Uh, but volunteers are really the critical piece of 59 Days of Code. It just would not happen without the 100 plus people who give up their time every single year to do stuff, pick up ice, get lunch, set up booths. 
tape down power cords, design stuff. I mean, we're talking about millions of dollars in volunteer, volunteer time. And it worries me to think, what if people stop volunteering? What are you going to do then? There are only so many favors you can call in at a time, you know? And after a while, you're out. Uh, you have to go back and do something else. So that worries me. Number three is what we're doing uh, new enough. I believe that everything has a shelf life, 59 days of code included. And uh, I think that if, uh, if we don't evolve over time, uh, meaning if the, the board currently doesn't take this idea and move it to another level, it will die. And that scares me. Actually, it scares me a lot because I think to myself, I don't even know what the next thing is. Uh, this, was a, uh, this was an idea I didn't even know was an idea when we had it. What are we going to do next? Uh, so that scares me. Are we, what we're doing is what we're doing uh, new enough. Number two, what if Nick Gundry doesn't compete anymore? <laughs> <in Google? laughs> Where is he? I, I heard a rumor that he might be. be. Nick Gundry. <laughs> 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 Nick Gundry has competed in every year uh, of 59 Days of Code, and right about four minutes before I went and got on a pony. I saw that his application to compete came through. So he's five years in the 559. I think that deserves a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, you guys, if he doesn't compete, shut it down. There's no reason. <laughs> There's no reason to do this anymore. I mean, look at that face. <laughs> that, this is Tough Mutter, <laughs> where he almost killed me. I have a lot of stories about how people almost killed me. You can ask Jake about that <laughs> a little later today. Maybe we're in a fender bender today. Maybe Jake tried to kill me. He survived the pony. <laughs> uh, and so the number one reason that I'm worried about the future of 59 Days of Code is because I'm a, one of those people that does everything herself. Uh, I, uh, I like to have it all in my hands. I like to be able to say that if it didn't work out, it was my fault. I like things to happen on time or not on time, and that's too my fault. So my number one fear uh, for sort of passing the torch is who I'm passing it to. Uh, and that's the board this year, and they should all, uh, you should all get to know them and shake hands. We'll talk about them later and uh, have a free beer and we'll chat. Uh, but uh, lucky for me, uh, there have been a few people who have really stepped up to the plate since this started. And uh, I think they really deserve recognition, but it also, again, worries me that these <coughs> are the leaders that you have. <laughs> yeah. It's the leadership, you guys. I mean, so that's really the story of 59 Days of Code. I've, I've bared my soul to you. You now know what worries me about moving on. I'm really happy that you came. I'm not going to go on or else one of us is going to start crying, and that's embarrassing, you guys. Uh, but please do stick around and ask me questions. We can do a Q&A right after this if you want to know the nitty-gritty details. Uh, but thank you for five years in the 559. And um, I love you guys. Thanks. Aww. You guys just want to chat with me after? Because that's good enough, too. What's the best ad, what's your favorite entry ever? Mm, my favorite entry ever. What's up? Oh. Uh, my favorite entry ever uh, is an app that didn't actually come to fruition, uh, although there was a lot of promise and talent. And to this day, I get asked if it was ever completed. It was called um, Harvest, Harvest Health, I think. And it gave you the location of every fruit stand in the Central Valley. Uh, and people could sign up and, and put up a new fruit stand if they wanted. But it would tell you when they were. It was sort of like the Yelp for fruit stands. And I thought that was really promising. Yes? What are you guys um, doing towards outreaching towards like youth and growing the future of the development? Uh, the question is, what are we doing to reach uh, the younger audiences? Yes? Uh, I. I'm an educator, and I would personally assign extra credit to students who went to the uh, showcase yeah. if it was during the school year. Yeah. School, yeah. During the school year. That's a difficult one, too. We, uh, we've looked at the calendar about 900 times since this started. We never have found a great time to stick two months into the year where you're not really concentrating on anything else. Uh, so that's why it lands outside of the school year. Uh, but in terms of answering your question, 
we will go and speak to any school anywhere anytime uh, that will let us come and speak to tell them what 59 days of code is uh, and how you might be able to get involved anytime uh, we've gotten the question a lot about starting a junior 59 days of code um, I think that would be a really neat initiative I think that that's a large under undertaking just on account of all the education that would go along with that because you would necessarily in my opinion you would necessarily have to provide coaching <coughs> uh, and uh, just tutelage generally uh, for very young competitors but I think that could be a very real and promising thing there are similar things excuse me in uh, like robotics and, and what have you uh, and it would be really neat to see that in our area for younger generations yes so about franchising in order to provide have we thought about franchising it? Uh, that was actually one of the ideas uh, that the incubator had at the very beginning. Uh, there were a number of people, not all of them, it was actually divided. Uh, the, half the incubator said, yes, that's a great idea, let's do this, and the other half said, absolutely not, we're focused on Fresno. Uh, my biggest problem was quality. Um, I really believe that if we don't do this right, then we just should stop doing it. Um, and I, don't, I never really felt that I would give the love and care uh, to uh, Tucson, Arizona that I do to Fresno. So that's probably the biggest reason we never did. Yes? What's the top lesson you'll take away from starting 59 Days of Code in these past five years? What's the top lesson I can take away uh, from starting 59 Days of Code in the last five years? There is no reason to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, my top lesson, okay, my top lesson from starting 59 Days of Code and everything that came after it is you really never know what's going to happen uh, with every opportunity that you have. So whether it's a person that you meet or a teammate that left the team or, uh, you know, a sponsor that really came through in a pinch or any of those things, you really just don't know what's going to come of those things because it's five years since we started and today those relationships still exist in totally different ways. Um, I started... Uh, co-founded Bitwise with Jake, I had no idea that was going to happen. My CTO at Edit is Derek Payton, he was a competitor in the very first year. Nick Gundry has competed in five, nope, that's the same. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, that would be my, the biggest takeaway for me is you just really have no idea uh, what relationships will turn into over time. What are you going to do in the future? What am I going to do in the future? That's a really good question. Uh, I tell myself that I'm going to take more time to just hang out and read. Uh, and then I spend a day and a half doing that, and I realize, man, that was a wasted day and a half. <laughs> <So> <laughs> what business can I start today? <laughs> uh, I think that uh, my next, I, I, right now I really have a heart for um, changing our city, Fresno, uh, and I'm going to devote a lot of my time uh, to making sure that technology is a centerpiece of that. Any other questions? Yes. How much does it actually take to run 59 days of monetarily? In terms of cost? Yeah. Are you, uh, so, okay, so the question is, uh, how much does it take to run 59 days, days of code? What does it cost to do this? If you count all the prizes, uh, and, are we counting volunteer hours, or are we just hard costs? Hard costs. Hard, hard costs, it costs, uh, depending on venue and those types of things, roughly $50,000. Uh, that's a ballpark figure. If, if I had the budget for it, it would be 100000 and it would look like E3. Uh, but the very first year, we had the venue sponsored, we had the music sponsored, we had a stage and a screen, and that was sponsored. And we really just put everyone in a, in a room and sent a lot of emails. That was year one. Uh, and that probably cost me, or cost us, rather, uh, maybe $5,000. So our budget has grown for sure tenfold in the last five years, and I hope that it continues to do that because the event will just get bigger and better and more engaging and launch people's businesses and ideas and people will meet and you know that's what I hope for. Not so much the dollars. You guys, thank you so much for coming. Please hang out and ask questions of everyone here. Yeah.